try it for the inconvenience. Uh, they have this every once a year, and so we have to uh, kind of go with them. For a long time ago, we we're guests in our house. We got to go by the rules. So I asked a friend. I've known him since in the program. I think I was at. I think I was at his first day meeting. You know, and uh, and I've never heard him believe before. I don't think. And uh, he's a good friend of mine. I don't see him that often, but I see him every time we go to Alexander, Indiana. And he's always there. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to give my friend Bruce from you're from Muncie, right, Bruce? Yeah. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Bruce. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Bruce. And um, uh, I don't know if it's an inconvenience, but I'm just glad to be able to be in front of you all to tell a little bit of my story. And um, I hope um, something that I share today will uh, uh, help you out or encourage you to keep coming to AA meetings. Not to, don't, don't leave before the miracle happens. Yeah. Um, I'd like to start out with my sobriety date, January 19th, 1986. Uh, that was a very cold day and, and monthly at that time. Uh, but uh, I want to get into a little bit of my story and also tell you a little bit about recovery because there's not a person in this room who don't know how to drink. And I'm not going to I'm going to teach you how to drink or how, how to drink successfully. I was a failure at a drunk, okay? Uh, uh, and this activity that's going on kind of reminds me of about the first time I did take a drink. It was a family get-together in the summertime. Yeah. It was at a park. And, and uh, at that time, uh, the man had uh, wine and bottles in the ground and uh, beer and ice cream and stuff for the kids. Not, not the beer, but we did drink the beer. Uh, but the women were over to cooking and my father, my grandfather, uncles, and all these relatives, we kids catered to them to make sure that they were well lubricated. And then in a way, the, we got lubricated too, got sick and it was kind of a, pre, a precursor of what later on happened in my life. You know, I, I drink, get drunk, and get in trouble. Uh, that was part of my MO. Uh, uh, I, really, I really believe in the book Alcoholics Anonymous and what I've learned from this. I suffer from an illness called alcoholism. Uh, it affects me physically, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, I grew up in a religious home. Uh, my my parents did the best they could with what they had. Uh, I don't blame anything on them. I had one older brother, one older sister, one younger sister, and four siblings that died early in life. It didn't make it more than a couple months. My mother was a diabetic, um, and uh, she dies of that when I was 11 years old. Uh, what's that got to do with my drinking? Nothing, people. <laughs> yeah. That's just part of my life, okay? Um, uh, and I use that, her... Uh, my mother's death, my father didn't remarry. He had went to, a, he was from a broken home and he made a vow that he was gonna raise us uh, without getting married and he did that. Um, uh, but when my mother passed away, my life changed and my relationship to what we call God changed a lot. And I kind of used that as uh, excuses or reasons why I did some of the stupid stuff I did. I did. I believed in God. I've always believed in God, but I didn't think he believed in me by the time I got to you people in Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, I know I'm, I may not look it, but I was uh, 
I got to this program at the age of 30. So I'm not going to tell you all about all that other stuff, but I will tell you, look, hi highlights of the low life, okay? Uh, uh, through high school, uh, my drinking uh, started out as a weekend thing with some kids, neighborhood kids, and later on it was my dad worked nights, and uh, so I kind of, after my mother passed away, uh, we were pretty much on our own. We didn't have babysitters. We raised ourselves. Uh, you know, one time, I, my brother got angry with my sister. They were doing the dishes, and she just stabbed him with a fork. You know, so that, was, that happens. Okay, we we just do things. But uh, life was different then. Uh, why I uh, my drinking continued. Uh, like I said, basically started out as a weekend thing with my friends and stuff like that. In high school, I got involved in sports. I drank uh, normally uh, any opportunity that I had. Uh, got in a, some trouble with family and, and the school and all that good stuff that we do, but I made it through. Uh, time I'm 17, 18 years old, there's a thing called uh, Vietnam was going on. Uh, my father gave me a choice. Uh, I either go to work, get a job, or join the service. Um, I uh, chose to go to school. Uh, I was not drafted. Uh, it was in the last draft. Uh, I've I kind of regret that I didn't do that uh, because of what's happened. Uh, my father was a World War II vet and was very adamant. My brother, uh, who could have went but chose not to. Um, so, you know, I, I felt there was some guilt with some of that. Uh, I did go to school. I went to Ball State, which is Fruit Jar Tech. Uh, but to do that, there was one thing that was going on. My mother, when she passed away, it qualified us for aid to dependent children as kids. And my father was good enough to not use that money. He put it in bank accounts for us. And by the time I got to school, it was time. I had roughly about a year, enough money for about a year of school. So if I wanted to continue on, I, I'd need you to get a job. So I got a job. I worked 40 hours a week, and I paid my way through school, went to school. I started out as an industrial arts teacher, uh, ended up changing my major to be uh, in business management. Uh, what's that got to do with my alcoholism? Uh, the gas station I worked for, I worked third shift. The manager happened to drink. And we always had a... We always kept a bottle in the back room. And we were fortunate enough that the liquor store was right next door to the gas station. So he didn't care if he drank it, just make sure it was filled back up the next morning. That was no problem. And uh, there were many times I, I drove to school, 20 miles or so. I'd get off work, go splash water on my face, change over, and head off to college. Uh, but I was, I'm going to say well old. I wasn't drunk in my estimation. I had been drinking, okay? Uh, you know, we get to that, at least for me, you get to that point where you kind of get a buzz on and you just kind of maintain. Uh, that was what was going on, and I'm here I am. I'm early 20s and, 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 and early on in my 20s. Uh, Got through school and doing all that. And I, I thought, well, you know, I, I got this diploma and I'm going to go get a, a job. I got a job in Marion, Indiana as a supervisor at a, of a, a factory over there. And I was getting pretty good money. I, I had this belief, you know, at that time, if, you know, you know they give me $35,000, $40,000 a year, I'd be happy. I was living 
high on a hog at that time. And um, uh, I got this job, I'm doing this, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, working all different kind of shifts with them. And I uh, thought I'm doing a real good job, but this is where I started having more trouble. I was at a, I got a little bit too much to drink one evening. And uh, I got thrown in jail for public intoxication. And um, uh, didn't happen to go to work that next morning. Uh, so I shrugged it off. You know, you, you know how we get, we kind of justify our actions. I ended up doing that, ended up going uh, back to work, you know, the next day, got everything was okay, no big deal. So after about eight or nine months later, it's about time for a review of my performance. I go in there with this idea that, you know, I've done a good job for these people. They should be giving me a good raise. I left that meeting with two weeks severance pay and no longer worked there. And um, uh, and that had to do with they did some other changes. That's the way I looked at it. But it could have had something to do with my drinking. Um, uh, that means that I ended up moving back to my father's place for a little bit. Um, and I really liked unemployment for a while because I get paid one week and I drink that up. And um, I stayed inebriated for a while. Uh, that started running out. The relationships I got involved in, when the money's gone, the women are gone. <laughs> okay? Uh, and uh, uh, my money's running out. And I'm kind of crunch time. We drunks, we, we get crunch time, we got to do something. So uh, one thing I learned at Bull State was you wear a sport coat, a tie, you go look for work. And this was before, I know most of you all old enough to remember, we, we didn't have to go online. There was no such thing as online. You, you showed up. Well, I had this experience of, of machining aspect. And... Uh, uh, basically through shop class in high school and a little bit of Ball State before I switched my major. And um, so, you know how we're full of BS a lot of times? <laughs> uh, I, I go to these shops in this town called Muncie, Indiana, and, and um, I'm telling these people, you know, there's, there's machine shops. And I, I think I can do this stuff. I'm telling them I... I uh, I know how to run a Bridgeport mill, an engine lathe, a surface grinder, and other machining equipment. And uh, this this gives me they give me an application. I fill out this application, and being the drunk I am, I'm I'm a little half lit anyway with some of this stuff. But I fill out basically a a, a small minimum wage because I needed to work. And I knew uh, the things were closing in on me. Manager comes out and he says, uh, you know, you got your own tools? I said, yeah, I got my own tools. My idea is the tools are uh, sockets, wrenches, and screwdrivers and a small little thing called like a tackle box or whatever. And his idea is, is a seven-door roll around, two-door riser, and eight-door machinist chest. You know, but I tell him, and I got my own tools. And, and like he said, next other question that he had, he says, uh, can you be here at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning? You know, me full of BS. I said, well, sure, I can be here at 6 o'clock next morning. I hadn't got up at 6 o'clock in I don't know how long, okay? So I go home and I grab my little toolbox, which is about the size of a tackle box. And I got my little tools in it. And I put that in the car and I... I gather to this place and I, I go walking in and, and this is, most of us I think can relate to this. You know, you know the looks that you get when you're a drunk of people, you kind of get them, people give you the eye. Well, I'm carrying this small little tackle box, toolbox <laughs> in and these are these guys with seven door roll around, two door drivers, seven door chest, stands about yay high. They're all, all around, and they, 
And I'm walking in, and I'm getting these looks from people. This supervisor gets me and uh, gets me and takes me over these a bench that's about the size of one of these tables here. I set that tool bo little toolbox down there, and he gives me a look. He says, "He says that's all you got?" And I said, "That's all I need." He kind of <laughs> shook his head and uh, ended up uh, ended up sweeping the floor and deburring parts that, that day. But I got to tell you the truth. I didn't. Later got my seven door roll around, two door riser, and eight door chest later on, okay? And I'd worked at that concern there for probably about 20 years before I left there. Oh, wow. And, um, but in the meantime, here I'm, I'm drinking. And with that job, uh, there was a lot of people that would like me that drank, okay? Uh, we'd, we'd drink our lunch. I don't know if people still do that or not, but we would drink our lunch a lot and uh, uh, go back to work and do things. And uh, I want to I want to tell you that that experience with his toolbox was one thing, and I, I want to get into more recovery here in a little bit. I'm going to fast forward. I, where the alcohol took me, I got three DWIs, a couple public intox. Uh, and uh, one of them is May. It wasn't it wasn't the race, the 500 race, but I was at time trial at one time, and I ended up getting thrown down to Marion County Jail for a one night stay because uh, of my drinking. Um, I never went to prison per se, but I went to a, a few county institutions of higher learning. And, and um, uh, my last thing with the the DWIs was, um, I'd been in front of this judge too many times, and, and he advised that I would seek treatment or he would assign me one in a state institution. And uh, so I, I uh, still had this job at this one tool shop. Uh, and um, I don't know, I've always thought about this. I, they must have seen something in me, because there were other drunks that they didn't put up with, yeah. but they put up with me. And uh, uh, I still had that job. I'd lost the house that I'd been living in. The girl I was with left as the money left. And um, um, I had to move to Muncie from Anderson, which was basically, I don't know, 15, 20 miles from where I was living at. And I kind of tell people that I, my family kind of sent me up the river. Uh, they deported me to Muncie. They dropped me off. My father was still still alive, and I worked 45, 50 hours a week. And I was broke. I owed this, and I owed that. I owed a lot of things. And uh, I went through the gamut, as we all do, to our family members. Uh, he said, Bruce, we got, he got me out of one room apartment. I, I'll never forget it. It was 200 bucks. He put 200 bucks down. I paid him later on, but he said, Bruce, I'm done with you. Or your family's done with you. We've had enough. Don't call your sister. Don't call your brother. Don't call any of us anymore. And I knew he meant that. And I knew the damage that I'd done. I didn't, like I tell you, I, I went and got drunk again. Okay? That's what we do. And uh, I had to get, I had to beat myself up enough. Luckily, I lived. Uh, I went through a outpatient program, treatment program. Also, to pay my debts to society, I had to spend nearly a year of weekends at a county institution in Madison County. I get locked up on Friday nights, get released on Sunday evening. Uh, uh, before that was all over with, I got to this program called Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'm going to get to that aspect of it. Uh, uh, the people going through all that stuff with the treatment, they suggested that I go to go to meetings. And I knew about meetings before through my other involvement with alcohol and the courts. And uh, in Anderson, uh, there was an old chapter house on Brown Street, an old smoke-filled room. I loved that. 
I love the smoke pit. Yeah. And, and uh, 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 there was some crusty people in there, like we are today. And uh, but uh, they said some things, and I couldn't relate to that. That wasn't me yet. I wasn't done yet. By the time I got to Muncie and, and the, the pit that I was in, in that one room apartment, and, and I was not. I had suicidal thoughts, okay? I didn't, I didn't cut myself up or shoot myself or nothing like that, but I had, I, I thought about checking out. I thought, you know, with all my troubles, I'd just grab my vehicle and run to Ohio, run somewhere else, okay? Just escape. And then one of my family members told me something that I'll never forget. He said, Bruce, wherever you go, there you are. You, 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 you're going to take your problems with you, okay? That's not. I got to change, and I, 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 I'll say this much, and this was about the time when I made that decision of, of my bottom. You know, I just God just take, just take, just take. And I heard this voice. There's no person around. I was in this locked up room, one door, one window, drinking. I heard this voice says, I give you life, live life. And I was, I was kind of shocked. And um, I called a local number in Muncie. Uh, I talked to another friend that I knew in Anderson. He said I ought to go to AA, and I, I believed that because I'd been. But I got, called a local number, and it, they called me back. And guys, you know, told me where the meetings was at. Want to know if I needed a ride? I was too, I guess, ashamed of where I lived and what I was, how I was. He, he just gave me the address and said, I'll get there. So this is in dead of winter, okay? I walk about two and a half, three miles to where this meeting was at. At that time, I, I got to give you a little description. I had dark hair at that time, about down to here. I had a mustache, and I walked into this meeting room at the I don't know club, and I had ice on me, and uh, I'm shaking. Uh, and I, that group was, uh, there was a guy there that agreed to me, a big burly guy, and uh, he, gave, he did one of the smartest things that I found out in Alcoholics Anonymous. He gave me a half a cup of coffee. Because a full cup, I'd have spilled it all over everybody. And uh, welcome me into the meeting. I can't tell you much what happened at that meeting. But I will tell you what I, my feelings was. I feel a sense of peace came over me as a people. And uh, I can't tell you what they said, but they said keep coming back. I've been thrown out of bars before, some of them. So it, it, it gave me hope. I, got, I found hope there. Um, I'm going to fast forward to, you know, I later got a sponsor, and I, I want to congratulate this group of, of all the activities that y'all got going on around here and, and staying active. I got involved in an active group. Uh, I got a sponsor. And I'm going to tell you some, hopefully some funny things here is that, you know, when I first got sober, you, uh, you hear all kinds of things. I, I, that this, this disease affects me physically, mentally, and spiritually. In those three areas, the 12 steps work to help change our lives. Well, I'm, I'm not having a whole lot of success on money-wise. Uh, and um, uh, I... I I know my employer would pay for new glasses, and I'm going to tell, I'll back up just a little bit. Back during these times of my DWIs, you know how we do our best thinking and drinking? Yeah. I, I had thought, well, you know, the reason I got picked up was because I was driving left to center, and I wasn't, or a taillight was out, or something was going on. And I figured it was because I wasn't seeing the road right. And, I, you know, and I'm sitting there drinking, and I'm thinking, you know what? If I go to my optometrist half lit, 
he can adjust my eyesight yeah. about anything. <laughs> and that, that conclusion thought, hey, man, you know, that might work. Now, any of y'all got any ideas about that, i got to tell you the rest of the story. The rest of the story is I did go get my drunk glasses. And they worked for a while, but I got picked up again. And it didn't work. But that was a couple years later, fast forward, I get sober in this program. And uh, I'm having these real bad headaches. I ain't drinking no more. Things ain't going right. And I go to this optometrist, and he checks my eyeglasses. He says, Mr. Cleaver says, this is, these glasses you're wearing are about two times too powerful than what you really need. I thought, wow, this sober thing must be doing good for me. <laughs> uh, but that's how stupid I am, okay? I get, he gives me another subscription of glasses, and the headaches kind of ceased. They weren't completely over, but I felt better. I could see clearer. And I suggest for new people to look at this program with a new set of eyes, because the eyes we've been looking at kind of rose color. And um, that was one of the little benefits of, of, some, of sobering up, but also applying the steps. And I, I really want to tell you that uh, AA told, showed me how, not only how not to drink, but how to live. Because seeing that home group and some of the people, we're, there's three parts to a meeting. There's a meeting before the meeting. Like tonight, the friends that came with me, we went and drive over here. And I remember going to road I call them road trips, where you, we'd go to hear people talk, okay? You get in the car, you have a little meeting in the car, and then you have a meeting that you're, that you're at, and then there's a meeting after the meeting. Sometimes it, if we're not traveling, it may be at a, a little coffee shop or some little restaurant afterwards, you know? But that's, to me, that's where I got the meat and potatoes of this program. You know, and, and and that's where my sponsor and I kind of got serious about doing some stuff, and I'm really grateful for that. Uh, they they showed me how to live, and uh, through their own example, and that's what uh, you know. My my sponsors are still alive. No, they're not dead yet. Uh, some of them are sick, and they they have health problems, and. Um, that happens to all of us when we get older. But I, I can never repay what this program has given me. Uh, uh, also, I want to tell you that I got involved in a home group. I've been a GSR. I've been treasurer. And I don't want to bore people with all this other stuff. But it is very important that, you, that it's a group that got people sober. It's not meetings. Okay? Uh, they say meeting makers make it. That may be true, but if it wasn't for a group, I wouldn't be sober today. It was people that got me sober. You know, my own due diligence of not drinking. But I had, to, you know, we had activities. That, uh, I was younger then, and I could do a lot of other things. You know, we used to spend like on a Saturday, we'd, we'd rent out a hall to play basketball or volleyball, and a group of us go do stuff. And, um, we kind of hung around together to do things, and I got involved with some other people. And um, uh, I want to, I won't take too much time, but I want to get into uh, some of the service aspect, if if I can. Is uh, the most important thing is a home group, because that's where that's that's where everything's really at. Uh, all this other stuff is down. I truly believe in the inverted triangle. Uh, because I've been there. Uh, the groups are, are, have been good. I got involved in the local intergroup, and then I got involved with our local area, and uh, uh, did a lot of things with that. And uh, uh, Gary, you know, I think, I got to say this, I think some of this goes back to Sister Ruth, that it, where, where we met, and uh, going around and, and listening to people. And some of these uh, get-togethers, uh, anniversaries, and banquets been at. Um, those that was a lot of fun times at, at with people. And um, uh, I, I got involved in the 
in the area, but probably around 2000, a little after 2000, probably uh, three or 2004, I kind of got this bug called the archives in history. And because some of the people in my local community were getting a lot older, the older members were getting older and dying off. And um, I started interviewing and talking with them. I think, I think that's important to, you, to us, and it, it was real helpful. Uh, I heard some really neat stories. You know, I, I never, will never forget. They touched my, they touched my soul, and uh, uh, I got involved with a lot of that. And I, that, uh, my recovery today is, I got involved with the archives, the local and in, in the area, and then they end up uh, asking me to. My sponsor asked me to uh, make myself, if I would make myself available for some area service positions. And he, I asked him, am, am I worthy of that? I don't think I could do that. He said, all we're asked is, can you make yourself available and do you have the time? Well, I had the time. I, uh, the, I've not been real good at my relationships in life. And um, I'll, I'll admit that. But uh, uh, my family and, and, and things like that, what's going on, were, things are got a lot better since Bruce got sober. Uh, I, I was able to be around my father probably almost 16, 17 years before he passed. And I was grateful I was to be there to, to help him in, his, in those last years. Uh, years of his life, and we were we were pretty close. Um, and I, I also realize now that, like he, he, a lot of his friends were dying off, and all I all I got all he had left was us, us kids, pretty much, because his most of his friends had passed away. So it was good to it's good to spend time with him. But I got to tell you a funny story. I I got sober and I bought a house and. I had my own place, and my sponsor felt like, uh, you know, I'm finally getting ahead of life a little bit. And he, I had a sleeping bag, and he got that sleeping bag out, and there was nothing in this house. I finished, I bought the house, finalized everything, didn't have no furniture in it. I got this sleeping bag, and he lays this, my sponsor lays this uh, sleeping bag in a, in a bedroom and says, this is where you're sleeping tonight. So I, I slept there, and, I, and then he ended up, uh, ended up acquiring things, got things and stuff like that later on. But I want to tell you about my father. You know, he, I paid him back later on. Thank you. Uh, I paid him back what I owed him. I probably, uh, not only for the $200 he put down, but a lot of other things that he helped me with later on. But um, when I was... Um, I was working nice, and my dad was retired. And uh, he would do things like he'd come over, and he'd start fixing this, and he'd start fixing that. And uh, next thing you know is, oh, Bruce, I, I need a hundred dollars here, and I need a hundred dollars here, and, and he started doing things. And I appreciate, I really appreciated that. I, you know, and finally I got to a point I had to pay some other bills and stuff like that. I said, Dad, I, you know, I appreciate what you're doing, and, but you know. Uh, I'm really kind of short right now, but can can, can you hold off on this? Says, no. Says, this is this is what I, this is what it is. Says, well, why is that, Dad? Why, why you? Says, well, this is the payback, son. When 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 you kids were growing up, you cost me money. Okay, and I'm just I'm just I'm just paying you back a little bit. You know, so I can laugh about these things today. You know, and 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 because uh, God bless them, and 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 you know. I know he's long gone now, but um, uh, his examples and his helpful and, and humor is the best. One of the best things in, in my recovery today is that we need to laugh, and because we could cry all the other stuff that's been going on. But I know the it's getting close to that time, and I, I want to get into what I what I've done is. Uh, I've been sober because of 
this program by Coach Anonymous, a sponsor in a home group. My home group today is actually in Anderson, Indiana, and my service sponsor is a part of that group. Uh, and he was, I'm going to blame him, uh, and telling me to uh, make myself available for service positions in the area. And it gave me an opportunity to, to not only be with the archives committee doing a lot of that stuff, but I, I ended up being an alternate uh, delegate for two years and ended up being a delegate after that. And I feel privileged and grateful to you people uh, and to have that privilege to represent Northern Indiana as, as, uh, as their delegate for two years. Yeah. And um, uh, your delegate, John C., was a delegate at the time when I was a delegate. And uh, uh, we happen to be on the same committee as uh, CPC, Cooperation for Professional Community. He was, uh, uh, he was on that committee, same with me. And one thing I want to, uh, there's a lot of things I would like to say, but I had an opportunity to meet all the staff of World Services and, and the people that work for us. Cool. And, and uh, as the, the, the other delegates, you know, there was, there was 93 delegates at the time you know, and, and staff people. And, I, and I've got their names, their numbers, and, and I have called some of them, and they have called me. And... Um, um, it's a true fellowship. And I, I got to say this. New York does not dictate to us. We tell them. It, and the conference is our conference. They don't tell us what to do. We tell them what to do. Um, I don't know what happened this year. I don't have that expertise because I done rotated out. I, I was a panel 67. Uh, I think we're, we're panel... 73 or 74 now. So what that means is when the person comes in, that's panel one started in 1951, panel two was 1952. That's how, that's how that goes. But anyway, I'm grateful for that sir, part of service. Now that I'm rotated out, and I do believe in the spirit of rotation. Uh, because I was just a machinist by trade. I was not a very smart individual, but uh, I feel blessed that I was able to do these things. And everybody sitting here can do that too. It's just a matter of applying oneself and being involved. Uh, motorcycles are running, and uh, uh, I'm grateful to be here. I want to thank Gary for uh, allowing me to come over. I want to thank you all for taking the time and, and listening. Hopefully I said something that might be helpful for you. Uh, but with that, I do believe in this book called Alcoholics Anonymous. It's a 12 step. I like the readings that you had. Not only the daily reflections, the 24-hour book, all, all this stuff is, is important. I didn't say much on the steps today. I figured you need to get with your sponsor in your home group and learn a lot about that. Cause, uh, but it's all right here in this book. Um, it helped save my life, and I'm truly grateful. With that, I will be quiet. <laughs>
Oh, and Wayne. Yeah, Gary told me Bruce was killed the lead, and we'd see him at Anderson all the time. I'm like, Bruce got in a good place. And now I see him, I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I've seen him many times at Anderson. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's always a neat Saturday. I mean, that's a full day of good leading. And, fellowship and you know it's just it goes to show you that this program works if you put your heart and soul into it I mean you, you've done a lot of things and that's awesome I'm kind of not been in, into all that stuff yet but maybe I will someday but um, you know I, I really appreciate what you have done and uh, coming all the way from Anderson Indiana or Muncie or wherever still that's a pretty good job but you had friends come along like you said you had a meeting on the way here gave a hell of a lead now you're going to have a meeting on the way home, so thanks for coming to share, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Tom Alcoholic. Hey, Tom. Uh, I want to thank you, Bruce. Um, I enjoyed listening to your lead. It was, it was, uh, it was cool. Uh, I just enjoy listening to it. I'll listen to it several more times tonight. Thank you. That's all. Greg, I'll call hey, Greg. I, uh, I don't know much about Anderson. I uh, used to be in field trial beagles. There was a guy over there. He had a stud named uh, uh, Tonto something. He was expensive. $200 breed fee. This is 40 years ago. And I had three of the prettiest pups out of him, and not one of them could find a rabbit at their house. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty. Uh, thanks for Lee coming over here. Uh, I'm glad you and your dad got back. That's a tough one. And uh, I'm sure that we, we picked up something. You know, you say it, happiness, humor, keeps you going. Yeah. Tell you what I'll do, I'll make you a deal here. We'll give you the way. <laughs> <laughs> you let him go with you, and I'll tell you what, if you don't laugh at him ten times a day, there's going to be something wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Glad you came. Thank you. Thank you. It's all right, buddy. Buddy, I'll take you out back and give you a cheeseburger. <laughs> I'm Kevin. I'm Mel. Kevin. Thanks, Bruce. Good lead. It's good to see you. You know, I hadn't seen you for quite some time and seen you a few weeks ago over at Anderson. And uh, yeah, and, and I remember, I, I think, first time I probably ever met you, I, I used to go down to Winchester on Tuesday night yeah. once in a while. And. Uh, you know, and I uh, met you over there, but I hadn't seen you. So uh, I, it was good to see you over in Anderson. It was good to be here tonight. I'm glad I made it over here tonight and listened to you. So thanks for coming over. Have a safe trip back home. And, uh, uh, yeah, just thanks for what you do. Thank you. I'm Don. I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Donnie. Uh, Bruce, over, I've met you several times now in Anderson. I think it was a couple of meetings down there because I went for the race every year. So, um, first time I've heard your lead though, and I really enjoyed it. And you, you touch on a lot of things in my life, man, that I've been through. You know, with the old high school and then getting that choice whether to go to go to work or college or go, go to go to the army. Well, I got that choice. My dad asked me, "Did you want to go to college?" And I said, said no, and he said, let me take you to lunch, and he dropped me off at the Army recruiting <laughs> <laughs> told, told me to tell him I wanted to leave today. <laughs> and I ended up leaving that weekend <laughs> going into the Army, so. <laughs> but. That's where we started pulling for it, Yeah. 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 But I enjoy the part of the fellowship of the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I love hearing that. That's the most important part of this, is this is a learning process, and we learn every day, every day, and every meeting. If you don't take something from a meeting, you don't listen. I learn something every day. I, I know that the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous saved my life. And 
a friend of mine in the program told me once, you want to be an old timer in this program, it's real easy, don't drink and don't die. <laughs> and <laughs> it's most important thing you said about keep coming back and keep coming to the program. Well, that's the most important thing. You've got to keep coming back. The minute you stop, things get bad. And that's something I just don't want to do. I don't get to meetings as much as I want to now, but I know when I need to be here, I'm here. And I would love to be more involved in the program than I am right now, but I have a lady at home that needs my help a lot more at this moment. But my staying sober is still my number one thing. <laughs> and I tell her that all the time, that my sobriety still comes first. And that, that has to. If I get up every morning and I want to stay sober more than I want to get drunk, then I'm good. If I get up a morning and I want to get drunk more than I got to get sober, I'm in big trouble. So I thank you for coming over here. I hope to hear you again, Bruce. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. You know, I'm Tom, I'm a hog again. You know, you can tell the God consciousness that you have is the same one that Gary's got. They have to stay. You've shared the same, must shared in the same groups or something. But uh, that's all I kept sensing. Gary was in your lead. I don't know if he sponsored you or not. I don't know. That's all. I was on when graduated in 35 years. Yeah, you, I remember you, your thing you always said I made a choice when I got out of prison. Either go to the A meeting go to the crack house. <laughs> you came to A. That was a good decision, wasn't it? <laughs> the decisions we make today will affect her tomorrow. Rooms are nice too. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi, I've known Bruce from probably one of the first meetings that he ever came to when he first started. And um, I never heard your leave. So I'm glad I came. I'm really grateful to be here. Thanks for it. Thank, Thank you. you for the lead, and thanks for having us. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Anybody else? Uh, if you guys want to make uh, put, push those windows down, will you? I will close the meeting. Bruce, will close the meeting with our Father. Yeah. I know, but we're getting old. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good job there, Bruce. Thank you, Jerry. You got that. Oh, you're Thank you, Richard. What you been doing, Andrew? You got that, man? Well, I'm I'm here. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Nothing's been seen. 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 Nothing's been Jim, hey Donnie, Donnie, Jim's on the inside. My name's Thomas Zinger. He was sarcastic about it. You were sarcastic about it. I live in Indiana now. He said, oh, I'm good. I don't need any coffee. Stay with my sister. I went downhill, lady. Yeah, went downhill. Went to Indiana. I'm glad to be here. Okay. Well, we're glad you made it. Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, yeah, there's, there's road people. And they brought, the, brought the crew. The posse. <laughs> David is my and you got, you got Tom, 11 Tom minutes to spare. I know they paid you, but I should have been. I think Olimar would be here instead. Okay, but you came a long way. I'd like to be ahead of schedule. Well, that's why we don't get a
Seven in cold water, two in cold water, and three in Salina. I'm Garrett, an alcoholic. I'd like to welcome everyone here to the Friday night group of Alcoholics Anonymous. Those who wish, we hope to meet them with serenity, prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. All right. If you are interested in a, in a home group, uh, we invite people to join us. Who's a li who's a member of our group here? Yep. All right. Uh, I've asked my friend Richard to read the preamble. Hey Richard. Hey Richard. Hey Richard. Hey Richard. No dues for 
or fees for a membership. We're self-supporting here and grant the fees. AA is not allied to any sect, denomination, party, or religious institutions. It does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither it endorses it, <coughs> neither endorses or nor opposes the right causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help Hey Richard, my, my friend Tom, who read out works. I'm Tom, I call it. Tom. It all works. Rarely we've seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. Those who do not recover are people who cannot or will not completely get themselves to this simple program. Usually men and women are constitutionally capable and honest with themselves. If they are such unfortunate and not a fault, they seem to be born that way. They are naturally capable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands their dishonesty. Their chances are less than average. <coughs> there are those, too, who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders, but many of them have been recovered to have the capacity to be honest. Our stories disclose in a general way what it used to be like, what happened, and what it's like now. If you decide you want what we have and are willing to go to any lengths to get it, then you're ready to <coughs> As some of these we bought, we thought we could find an easier, softer way, but we could not. We thought that earnestness or command to be begging to be fearless and thorough from the very start. Some of us try to hold on to our ideas, and it all was nil until we let you out of the Remember that we do with alcohol, cunning, baffling, powerful. Without help, it is too much for us, but there is one who has all power. That one is God, and may you find him now. Half the measures of bill is nothing. We stood the turning point, we asked his protection and care to complete abandonment. Here are the steps we took, which are suggesting that the program would recover. One, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and our lives had become unmanageable. Two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives into the care of God as we understood Him. Four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five, admitted God to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our own. Six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Seven, humbly asking to remove our shortcomings. Eight, made a list of all persons we'd harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Nine, make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. And continue to take personal inventory and when wrong, promptly admit it. Eleven, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him, praying only for the knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry that out. Step 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to our hearts and to practice these principles in all our affairs. <coughs> Many of us exclaim, what an order, I can't go through with it. Do not be discouraged. No one among us has been able to maintain anything like perfect hands to these principles. We're not saints. The point is that we want to grow along the spiritual line. The principles set down are guides to progress. We claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. Our description of the alcoholic, the chapter to agnostic, and our personal adventures before and after make clear three pertinent ideas. A, that we were alcoholic and could not manage our own lives. B, that probably no human power could lead our alcoholism. And C, that God could have been able to some of the same Tom, I'll ask the friend to read the uh, 12 traditions. Good evening, everyone. I'm Don, and I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Don. These are our 12 traditions. One, our common welfare should come first. Personal recovery depends upon a unity. Two, for our group purpose, there is but one ultimate authority, a loving God, as he may express himself in our group conscience. Our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. Three, the only requirement for AA membership is the desire to stop drinking. Four, each group should be autonomous of such matters affecting other groups or AA as a whole. Five, each group has but one primary purpose, to carry its message to the alcoholic who still suffers. Six, an AA group ought never endorse, finance, or lend the AA name to any related facility or outside enterprise. These problems of money, property, and prestige diverge from our primary purpose. Seven, every AA group ought to be fully self-supporting and finding outside contributions. Eight, Alcoholics Anonymous should remain forever not professional, but our service centers may employ special workers. Nine, 
AA as such ought never be organized, but we may create service boards or committees directly responsible for those we serve. 10. Alcoholics Anonymous has no opinion on outside issues, hence the AA name ought never be drawn into public controversy. 11. Our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. We need always maintain personal anonymity at the level of press, radio, and film. 12. Anonymity is the spiritual foundation of all of our traditions, ever reminding us to place principles before personality. Hey, Don. 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 We have to live it unless from one family express a desire to live upon the spiritual principles of the thing. We ought not to urge them. We should not talk successfully to them in spiritual matters. They will take some time for the end of the world. They should have more than our work for less than a number. Ten or twenty years of drunkenness would make us factor. They may be some wrongs we cannot have fully right. We don't worry about them. We can't, can honestly say to ourselves that we would write them if we could. Some people can't and not be seen. We send them an honest letter. And there may be void reason to postpone the case. But we don't delay if we can avoid it. We should be sensible to acting on the Humble without struggle, uh, scraping. We've got people who stand, stand on our feet. We don't crawl for anyone. We were painstaking about the phase of death and development. We would be amazed before we were halfway through. We were going to know freedom and new happiness. We will not press past and shut the door on it. We will comprehend the work of that name and we will know peace. No matter how far down the scale we are we will see how spirits can benefit others. Really, usefulness, self-pity, and despair. We will lose interest in self-saving and gain interest in our fellows. Self-seeking will slip away to the whole way to an outlook upon life will change. Fear of people that can know it. Security will leave us for a truly know how the handle situation East Baptist will suddenly realize that, that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. There are extravagant promises no, they no, are not. not. They are being fulfilled among us sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. They were always telling we work for them. Thanks, Don. That's my friend Karen to read the uh, reflections. Karen. May 31st, readiness to serve others. Our society has concluded that it is but one kind of mission to carry the AA message to those who, do, who don't know there's a way out. The 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, page 151. The light of freedom shines bright on my fellow alcoholics as each one of us challenges the other to grow. The steps of self improvement have small beginnings but each step builds the ladder out of the pit of despair to new hope. Honesty becomes my tool to unfurl the chains which bound me. A sponsor who is a caring listener can help me to truly hear the message guiding me to freedom. I ask God for the courage to live in such a way that the fellowship may be a testimony to his favor. This mission frees me to share my gifts of wellness through a spirit of readiness to serve others. Hey, Karen. 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 Best friend, Andrew, read the 24-hour book. I'm Andrew Recovering Young. Andrew. May the 31st, thought for the day. I shall not want to wait to be drafted for service to AA. I shall volunteer. I shall be loyal in my attendance, generous in my giving, kind in my criticism, critical in my suggestion, loving in my attitude, I shall give to AA my interest, my enthusiasm, my devotion, and most of all, 
myself. Do I also accept this as my AA career? Meditation for the day. Prayer is of many <coughs> kinds, but of whatever kind, prayer is the linking up of the soul and mind to God. So, if prayer <coughs> is only a glance of faith, a look, uh, or a word of love, or just a feeling of confidence <coughs> in the goodness <coughs> and purpose in the universe still does result of this <coughs> prayer is added strength to meet, meet all temptations and to overcome them. Even if no su supplication is expressed, all the sup supply of strength that is necessary is secured because the soul being linked and united to God. <coughs> receives. Receives from him all spiritual help needed. The soul we when in the <coughs> human body still needs the things beyond belonging to it. Heavenly habitation. Prayer for me. I pray that I may be taught how to pray. I pray that I may be linked through prayer to the mind and will of God. Thank you, Andrew. You're in the co wire. We have the token system. We have our friend Jim to give out tokens. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jim. I am an alcoholic. Hey, Jim. Here at Coldwater, we tokens to uh, celebrate different periods of sobriety is there uh, beginning with the what we call the starter token so is there anybody here for their first meeting or their first meeting since their last drink do we have uh, anyone here celebrating one through six months seven to eleven months one year eighteen months Anyone celebrating anything uh, any year or thereafter? My name is Don and I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Don. As of yesterday, I have 35 years of oh, wow. Have the seventh tradition. We're so supporting the room contribution, so the task will be passed. Uh, as far as announcements, this uh, group will be permanently meeting here from now on in over here every Friday night at 7:30, and the online group moved out to the Briarwood. They're meeting out there now, so. And our anniversary will be uh, October the 13th. Back in the church basement. So we'll have flyers out sometime in September. Also, there's a men's recovery retreat, spiritual center of Maria Stein. It's, it's uh, July 19th through the 21st. Language of the Heart, presented by Scott F. Uh, and there's information here on that. There's a fee for that. Also, save the date, the 68th Ohio State uh, Convention is in uh, 6200 6, Quarry Lane, Independence, Ohio. It's August the 23rd to the 25th. There's a flyer zero on that. Also, uh, Kevin, you have the uh, uh, burn uh, 
Uh, yeah, group. I'm Kevin. I'm not Paul. Uh, yeah. Kevin. Fort Recovery Group will have their fine lake out here on July 20th. And uh, it'll probably start at noon. Um, I'll be getting some flyers and then some more information out on that. July 20th. Mm -hmm. And uh, June the 15th, I think, uh, Menden and uh, St. Mary's uh, Hope Group uh, Tuesday night will be having their anniversary. That starts at noon time at, in St. Mary's on Saturday. And uh, New Green and Noon meeting in the Wednesday, or the Monday night meeting to celebrate their anniversary. I think that's on, on August the 5th. It uh, starts about 11.30. Any other announcements? Hi, Brad. I'm off. Hey, Brad. 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 Uh, Lima New Ferry Group and Street Price tomorrow, June 11th from, at 11 a.m. at 1440 West Spring Street at the LHC NIP Community Center. It's a 12 and 12 study meeting at 1230. Bring a newcomer and some food to share. And then, let's uh, Old Timers Meeting, 34th Annual Old Fashioned Hot Dog. Banquet is June 26th. Doors open at 5:30. Eat at 6:30. Meet at 7:30. And then I don't know if you announced the district meeting this Sunday. Yeah. Is this Sunday? Yes. Bez House. That's for S G S R. G S R. Is anybody that's interested in service work? All right. Any other announcements? All right. Uh,